Hi and welcome to Morgana's Monday tutorials where my daughter will be painting this beautiful um, wild and rugged wetland scene inspired by a recent visit to Cookmere Haven. Hello everybody and welcome. It's Morgana here again today and I'm really excited to share with you this classic watercolour wetlands painting. Uh, which was inspired by a recent trip to Cookmere Haven, which is a beautiful river valley in the UK. I've included uh, a little clip, a little video snippet here so you can see uh, where I took my inspiration from for this painting. So without any more further fuss, uh, I shall begin. I'm using Milford brand watercolour paper. Uh, it's 100% cotton, cold pressed, weight 140 pounds, and I've got it taped onto my board, which is resting at an angle of roughly 45 degrees. Uh, the colours I'm using today are on screen now. I'll pop a full list of uh, all my bits and bobs and equipment in the uh, video description for any folks who are interested. Uh, but for now, all I'm doing is wetting the top uh, two thirds of my paper just using a large flat wash brush and getting that uh, nice and soaked in. So my first step for creating this lovely bright sky is a touch of raw sienna, which as you can see, I'm just dabbing on very roughly using very dilute paint, uh, which is going to give our sky a lovely subtle glow before coming in with some nice blues. Uh, I'm starting with cerulean. And again, I'm using it quite lightly. You can see I'm keeping a lot of water in my brush. This is to uh, help make sure that sky stays really, really wet, uh, that top part of the paper, so we can get some lovely wet and wet uh, blending going on. And now for a touch of cobalt blue as well, just to deepen and enrich that color. You can see I'm still using the uh, my large two inch uh, wash brush here. Uh, this is just a really good tool for getting big swathes of color in at once. And of course, you can always turn it flat or turn it to the side to get different shapes. And it's great for blending as well, which is exactly what I'm doing here, still with plenty of water on the paper. So the wet and wet uh, is blending really nicely and uh, all the uh, edges are staying quite soft, which is uh, really, really good because that means that I can just keep on blending uh, for as long as I need to get the, uh, the right shapes and the right softness that I'm looking for uh, in this lovely sky. And now, as you can see, I've switched out to a smaller brush. This is a little mop brush that I'm using uh, to just begin blending things together and softening down where there were some of those harder uh, straight edges left by the wash brush. Uh, I'm also using it to pull a little bit of paint out to give us some clouds. So you just uh, clean your brush, dry it so it's only damp. And as you can see, I'm just uh, swirling it across the surface of the paper and it's pulling out color, but uh, in a much softer way than it would if you used um, a tissue or some kitchen towel or other sort of absorbent material. It's pulling the color up, um, but in a slightly softer and more subtle way. You can see we're still getting soft edges there and I'm able to use this brush to uh, really soften down some of those hard blues and uh, give us a lovely hint of cloud and a lovely glow across the, uh, across the middle of this sky. So that's all I'm going to do for my sky today. I'm going to keep it really simple and clean. And now I'm returning to my flat wash brush and using it to get a little bit of dry brush across the bottom part of the paper here. It's time to put in the water into our wetlands. <laughs> So you can see I'm just dragging the tips of the brush really delicately across the bottom of the paper so we get a lovely soft wash of colour but with these glints of white paper peeking through which is going to give us that lovely simple sparkle of the sunlight on the water. 
So while the paint is still wet, I'm going to quickly put in a little bit of land here. I've switched to using a small round brush uh, and I'm using a green colour that I've mixed up using some raw sienna uh, with a touch of ultramarine. And I'm just going to lightly skim it across the horizon line here. And because I'm uh, doing this wet and wet, uh, we've got a lovely soft uh, diffusion of colour going upwards from that lovely band of green. So we get a little softness from that line going up into the sky. Not too far because the uh, paper is still only damp rather than very, very wet. So we get a soft line rather than lots of big cauliflowers. And just really loosely, just stuffing in a little bit of extra land, bringing it down into the foreground here. Again, using my uh, small round brush. And the joy of mixing your own greens is you can vary the shade as much as you like. You can see I picked up a little bit of extra raw sienna from my palette and I'm just sort of working it in to this little foreground spit of land on the right hand side. And now just coming in on the left with a little bit more land. I'm just trying to avoid the uh, areas where we've got some lovely uh, light peeking through, lovely little bits of white paper, a little bit of dry brush sparkle there. So I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, <laughs> and just paint around it. Now I'm just pulling that land out a little bit further into the uh, centre of the painting, but not too far. I still want to keep plenty of wide open space and I don't want to lose that lovely bright, pale sort of blue and white sparkling water. So now all I need to do is leave this to dry and here it is now that it's dried out. It's become a little paler but I'm really pleased uh, with how it's looking so far. So for the next step um, I'm just going to use a small brush uh, to begin adding uh, a few just really simple shadows using a darker green. So um, I added a bit of extra ultramarine blue to the green that I'd already mixed up just to deepen it down a little. And I'm just going along the uh, undersides of the green sort of spits of land I've got coming out into the blue water. And I'm just going along and uh, adding a really little fine line just along the underside. Uh, this just gives a little bit of shadow and helps with the impression that this is indeed land poking out uh, on the water rather than just uh, a green splodge. As you can see, it is slightly fiddly work. Uh, and of course, feel free to switch to a different brush. Um, I feel like perhaps a small flat brush would have been a good choice for this. As you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to this uh, sort of back far distant line as well. Uh, this distant horizon, this gets a faint shadow too. Uh, I think it's just one of those little extra touches that helps uh, bring the painting together. Now I've switched to a liner brush. This is a sword liner from ProArt, uh, which I'm using to add in some little delicate uh, reeds and rushes, uh, as inspired by my visit to Trickner Haven, uh, seeing the lovely wind among the rushes, hearing the sound that it makes. Uh, I was inspired to basically film this painting uh, with lovely rushes. So I'm using the tip of the sword liner 
it in some quite loose paint, again going for that own handmade green uh, and just bringing them up, bringing up really delicate little fine lines uh, and just trying to keep them mostly vertical but with a little lean, uh, lean to the left or lean to the right here and there just to make them look quite natural and look like we've got a little bit of a breeze blowing through them. I decided to add a little bit of extra land for these brushes plonked here uh, in the middle. I'm just tapping with the belly of the liner brush to just give a little bit of extra darkness around the base of those brushes. Lovely and simple. So this is really step one uh, for doing the uh, reeds and rushes detail and uh, step two is to just add a few extra little touches using a smaller brush. Um, I'm turning some of these into bulrushes uh, as they're known in the UK or I believe cattails in the US. Uh, this lovely distinctive shape. I'm using um, a touch of sepia on my uh, fine detail brush and just uh, using careful little strokes to uh, create that signature shape uh, just going along and uh, not doing it on all of the reeds I don't want to sort of make it look too uh, cluttered but just going along sort of every few and putting um, a fun little clump in here and there <laughs> there's some of my uh, favorite plants and favorite things to see uh, in a wetlands or fen or marshland I don't know why they just look charming So all I'm doing is going along this little spit of land here on the left and adding the detail uh, in small clusters. Uh, something you can do as well if you end up using a little too much paint or too much water is like here, um, I'm just dabbing out a little bit of colour using a clean tissue uh, just because I think my brush got a little bit overloaded with paint and <laughs> accidentally uh, splodged a little. But uh, it's one of the lovely things about watercolour is if you're nice and quick uh, you can easily mop up uh, mistakes such as that. So now I'm just moving over to the right hand side of the paper and basically doing uh, the same technique as I've just shown you. Uh, putting in these lovely straight uh, reeds and rushes to begin with using the liner brush and then I will go over them uh, with my fine brush and add in a little detail. Keeping those uh, lines nice and vertical except for a few here and there leaning sideways again just to mimic that uh, sense that the wind is uh, blowing through them. Don't worry, I won't, uh, I won't make you sit through another 10 minutes of painting rushes. I'm just going to uh, do these ones quickly and then uh, jump ahead a little in the video and uh, show you the finished uh, section. So here we are, I've just hopped ahead a little bit. I've done all the rushes on that foreground bit on the right hand side with the detail. And now I'm just adding in a little bit of extra detail 
on those uh, little spits of land that are fading into the distance, just using really uh, quick, um, fine strokes of the brush. And of course, don't forget to uh, make your reeds and rushes a little bit fainter and a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, the uh, further away they are. So now that the foreground is finished, I uh, just need to add the final finishing touch, which is a stain of Canada geese flying across that uh, lovely bright sky. And to do this, I'm using a miniature brush from ProArt. Uh, this is my little 5 slash 0 size brush, so it's very fine. And I'm using sepia as well to just fill in the uh, small silhouettes of these flying geese. This is uh, inspired again by my uh, by our trip to Tritmere Haven recently, where I must have seen, uh, or it must have been at least a hundred uh, Canada geese uh, among the wetlands. Uh, sadly, I have no footage to show you because they were far too far away for my little phone camera to uh, actually get a good picture. Uh, but they're lovely, lovely birds, sort of dabbling amongst the uh, the wetlands, eating grass, and just generally, you know, doing their little goose thing. <laughs> So uh, I thought I'd include them in this painting, uh, but flying rather than dabbling this time. Uh, it's quite a nice way to uh, paint these uh, geese just small and in silhouette. All you need to do is do a slightly, uh, a slightly wonky horizontal line for the neck and body, and then add a pair of uh, angled V shapes uh, for the wings. And as I paint these birds as well, it's just one thing to make sure you uh, uh, vary the placement of the wings each time. Uh, just a little, doesn't need to be much, but like this third one here I'm doing with the wings uh, facing down. He's obviously uh, mid-wing beat, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, just helps to make all your birds look unique and not like you've just sort of copy-pasted the same silhouette over and over again. As you can probably tell, I'm working uh, on a variation of the classic uh, flying V shape that is so characteristic of these uh, stains of uh, migrating birds. Uh, but I am trying to keep it looking uh, quite informal and quite natural looking. You can see I've got my birds uh, quite spaced out, a little bit random, but still in vague formation. Uh, just going for that more natural look, trying to make sure I don't get too much uh, accidental symmetry. <laughs> Just making them look a little bit random, but still in a pattern that's uh, pleasing to the eye.
so this is the last juice as you can see <laughs> I didn't really have too much of a thorough plan as to where to put these little fellas and once I'd done the main sort of V formation I realised that they needed just one more so this is their leader, he's out in front flying gleefully away there So now we've got the uh, the geese shapes done and you can by all means leave it at that point um, but all I'm doing now is just uh, adding a little bit of extra detail by using a tiny bit of opaque white gouache and I'm just using my fine brush to add a little stripe of white into the bird's wing just to give them that extra little touch of detail. Of course they are a uh, really too small to add uh, any more detail than this and uh, naturally if you want to skip this step then feel free uh, if you want to keep them all in silhouette and imagine that perhaps the sun is coming from somewhere behind them casting them in silhouette uh, as we peer up at the skein flying overhead then that's a wonderful image as well So now here we are with the finished painting. Thank you everybody very much for watching. I'm really pleased with how this one turned out and I really hope you enjoyed watching it come to life. Uh, any questions or comments you have, please leave them uh, below the video. And a uh, huge thanks again to the wonderful Lois Davidson for inviting me to share her channel to bring you uh, new videos every Monday. Uh, don't forget to come back midweek for the rest of Lois's wonderful watercolour videos uh, and in the meantime I shall wish you all a very good day and happy painting.